Okay, welcome back. The last time we looked at the structure of the cell and we tried to label all the key parts. Um, I don't think, I don't know whether the, that the drawing was clear enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another cell with all those organelles, but this time we're going to try and make sense of what they do, what is their function. How do all these organelles work together to make the cell an independently functional um, unit? Okay, so let's start with my cell and I'm going to put some labels on the structure. I'm going to use an animal cell once again. So that's my animal cell. That's my plasma membrane. Then I'm going to include my nucleus, which is by far the largest organelle in there. And I'll it just makes sense to include a few pores and to show that it's actually an envelope with double membranes. I would use double lines to show it like that. Within the nucleus, you would have chromatin, which is simply the loose DNA, and we can have our nucleus in the dark staining region in the nucleus. The rest I'm going to add quickly without speaking, just to say that you have seen all this before, so you should know what I'm talking about. Circles around the Golgi, and um, I'll have my centrioles there. And finally, the cytoskeleton, which we've seen is also very important. Let's also add a few. Cilia, which are on the surface of the membrane.
Okay. So the purpose of this session is not to go through all the structures again, but the most important thing is to understand what each one does. What is the role of this? And it's about combining everything. So let's talk about what the cell is supposed to do. What is the job of the cell? The cell should be able to do what I'll call three basic things. It should be able to replicate or divide. It should be able to synthesize obviously proteins. Okay? And then equally other things like it should be able to transport material and it must also generate energy. Okay, this may not be visible, so let's put it here. Energy generation. Right, so let's take the first one. Replication. How can the cell replicate? How can it copy itself? It copies itself because of the genetic material in the nucleus. So the nucleus, we would say, is the purpose is for replication. Why? Because of the DNA, which the information that is used is enable the cell to be able to divide by mitosis and so the total number of chromosomes will be doubled in there whilst the cell divides to form two diploid cells. Let's look at the other process, synthesis of proteins. And this one is very important because you, there are so many in, organelles involved and you should be able to put them all in a sequence. So to synthesize a protein, the most important thing is that you must get the information for this synthesis to decide on what sequence of amino acids should make the protein. That information comes from the DNA, from the gene. So one, we need information from the nucleus. Next, where does that information go? The information is sent out of the nucleus in the form of mRNA. And that mRNA goes to join a ribosome. But where was this ribosome made? The ribosome was synthesized in the nucleus. So ribosome production happens in the nucleus. So as you can see, we are still building up the functions of these different organelles. So the nucleus is responsible for ribosome production. The information for the production of this protein is obtained from the DNA or the chromatin within the nucleus. The information is sent out in the form of mRNA. It then binds with the ribosome. What does the ribosome do? The ribosome uses amino acid resources in the cytoplasm of the cell. So all these spots will be your amino acids. And the ribosome will then use the information obtained from the, M um, from the mRNA to now join up amino acids in a specific sequence. That specific sequence of amino acids is what we will call our protein. Are we there? So that is, and this protein as we call it, came from the joining up of all these separate amino acids in a specific sequence using information from the mRNA, which was then copied from the DNA in the nucleus. So how many organelles have we mentioned so far? The nucleus, the nucleus, and the ribosome. After the protein is made, what happens to the protein? 
the protein must be transported to the Golgi apparatus. So that protein's transport will be via the endoplasmic reticulum. So you can see the arrow pretty clearly going all the way from there, 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 and out. So we can say that the endoplasmic reticulum, the rough ER and the smooth ER, are simply involved in the transport of the products from the skin cell to the Golgi apparatus. So that is a fourth organelle here. Now, the smooth ER. The smooth ER has no ribosomes. What is its job? The smooth ER is also in the, involved in the process of synthesis. Synthesis of what? Lipids. So lipid synthesis. Okay? And the lipid, the lipid synthesizer will be things like phospholipids, cholesterol, anything like that which the cells need, which is lipid-based, would be synthesized by the smooth ER. Now, what happens to these products? These products must be put together in a form or in a way that can be effectively either kept within the cell where they don't cause any damage to the rest of the cell or in a form that they can be easily exported. The way in which material is removed from the cell or exported is what we call exocytosis. Now, this is a form of bulk transport and it involves the merging of the membranes of vesicles with the plasma membrane to release the products and mainly to be enzymes and so on. Okay? So, a goblet cell, for example, may try to release mucus out of the cells using these sort of vesicles. Where were these vesicles made? The vesicles were synthesized or made in the Golgi apparatus. So the main function of the Golgi apparatus would be to modify or process and package or packaging of cellular products in the form of vesicles, in the form of vesicles. And these are your vesicles. As we said, some vesicles are actually used for export. A few, however, will remain in the cell. One of these would be the good old lysosome, which is used by the cell to digest worn-out organelles. And also, when the cell is infected by pathogen, that lysosome contains digestive enzymes which will actually break down the pathogen. So, in this process of exporting or synthesis of proteins, one, how many organelles have we mentioned so far? Let's go back. One, the nucleolus producing the ribosomes. Two, the nucleus making the, where the DNA is copied in the form of mRNA. Of mRNA. Three, the mRNA joining up with the ribosome, the next organelle, which then synthesizes the protein, joins the amino acids together. Then, where is the protein transported? Through the rough ER, and then transported all the way through the smooth ER to the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus being made up of stacks of membranes which is almost identical to the rough and smooth ER. However, the main difference being that this one modifies and processes or packages material that have been made in the cell. And the packaging is simply a matter of putting a membrane around the product so that it does not interfere with other processes within the cell. Eventually, the vesicle which is now being formed is removed by exocytosis from the cell. Now, all these processes of protein synthesis and transport would require some form of energy. So the energy we can attribute to mainly the mitochondria. We don't produce energy, we generate energy. Okay? The mitochondria now take notes. 
if you say the mitochondria is responsible for respiration, that's not good enough. You must clearly state that it is for aerobic respiration. And aerobic respiration is the process by which energy can be generated from the breakdown of organic molecules using oxygen. Oxygen being the key word. Next thing is that we can see a lot of transport going on here. Different materials moving around and the question is what maintains this? What is holding, maintaining the structure of the whole cell? That is the job of the cytoskeleton. Think of a cytoskeleton as a sort of real network on which all these organelles are attached and they keep moving all around and so the cytoskeleton will maintain the structure of the cell especially in an animal cell, cell structure but also movement or transport of the cell. Even if the cell must change shape, for example in phagocytosis to engulf pathogens, that is the job of the cytoskeleton, which is simply a network of microtubules throughout the cell. Eventually, we can then talk about, say, the cilia. The cilia are on the membranes of the cell, and we can also refute another word as angulipodia. Now, angulipodium and cilia, same thing, it's just that the cilia are shorter and more numerous, and the lipodia will be fewer in number but longer. So a sperm, for example, does not have a flagellum, which we keep talking about. It's not a flagellum. A sperm actually has an andulipodium because it's made up of the same material as the cilia. What is the job of cilia? Cilia has the job of moving materials outside of the cell, not within the cell. So moving materials around the cell. So it's about movement of material outside of the cell. Have we cleared all our, all our organelles? Plasma membrane. Plasma membrane you would have discussed in cell membranes, which is a major topic, that without this plasma membrane, the cell cannot control anything that goes in or comes out. And we know that there is, that is a very, very important part of any physiological process. You need to control water potential, for example. You need to control the pH level, the toxicity levels, and you have to control that by deciding what goes in and what goes out. And that is maintained by the plasma membrane. Transport across the membrane will be very, very critical. So, in a nutshell, this would be the function of organelles within the animal cell. Next time we're going to look at the plant cell and any extra differences between the plant cell and the animal cell. And we'll also look at the prokaryotic cell. How different is the prokaryotic cell from the typical eukaryotic cell? What are the organelles that are missing from the prokaryotic cell, for example? And whether there are any peculiar organelles also in the prokaryotic cell that are not found in the eukaryotic cell. Take note of this, and I hope this has helped you to understand the functions of organelles a bit more. Thank you.